In the Bleak Midwinter by Christina Georgina Rossetti. This may seem an odd choice of him for July, but the global pandemic has made us all aware that we share this world and its seasons. We may fear that the coming of winter may bring a return of the virus, but the present situation has opened our eyes to broader issues, the injustices of this world and the possibility of a climate changed out of all recognition. I fell in love with this hymn, with its exotically named author and breathtakingly rich language and imagery from a very early age in the four verse version included in congregational praise set to Gustav Holst's Cranham. It begins in a place that I know very well. In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made moan. Earth stood hard as iron, water like a stone. Snow had fallen, snow on snow, snow on snow. In the bleak midwinter, long ago. For a few of my early years, we lived in a caravan in a field of cows, where winters were bleak indeed. The earth, rutted and pitted by their hooves, was hard as iron and painful to walk on. And the water, lying deep in the hoof prints, was stony and treacherous. But then the hymn soars to amazing heights. Our God, heaven cannot hold him, nor earth sustain. Heaven and earth shall flee away when he comes to reign. In the bleak midwinter, a stable place sufficed the Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ. Angels and archangels may have gathered there, cherubim and seraphim thronged the air, but only his mother, in her maiden bliss, worshipped the beloved with a kiss. I still have that vivid visual image of the cherubim and seraphim thronging the air. And then the last verse was fabulous. Yes, I wanted to give my all, give my heart. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part, yet. What I can, I give him. Give my heart. So, the hymn was there in my psyche, part of my identity, and it and I embarked on a lifetime's exploration together. I started to get involved in global issues through mission and international agencies. And as I travelled and met people, I learned how incongruous the association between a European winter and the birth of Christ sounded in a global context. In the bleak midwinter became a byword for the early mission movement's cultural arrogance. What did it mean in countries where snow and ice were unknown and Christmas came at midsummer? The gospel went along with Western norms of behaviour under the guise of civilization, an easy assumption of white superiority whose consequences we're still living with today. But I was also a lifelong feminist and I was amazed and delighted when I got acquainted with the third verse missing from congregational praise, which is a bit realistic. Enough for him whom cherubim worship night and day, a breast full of milk and a manger full of hay. Enough for him whom angels fall down before, the ox and ass and camel which adore. A breast full of milk? No wonder that didn't make it into the popular carol. Eric Routley famously refers to it as one slightly embarrassing line, and it was amended for Harold Dark's 1911 setting to a heart full of mirth and a manger full of hay. I chuckled at Routley's coyness, and I began to explore the place of Mary in the hymn. It's not unusual to find the figure of the Madonna and child at the heart of a Christmas carol, but the constant shifty, shifting between heaven and a cold stable in the middle verses 
strips the nativity scene of its 19th century sentimentality. The earthly scene is bleak, the word occurs three times, and at its heart is a real-life woman, described in what must have been quite startling imagery in her day, as offering the breast to her newborn child. Finally, researching for my book on women's hymn writing, I met Christina Georgina Rossetti, whom I felt I had known all my life. A poet of considerable standing, published in English and Italian, she wrote the powerful Goblin Market with its depiction of a female saviour. She was actively involved in the social issues of her time and intelligently engaged with the church and its doctrine. We can still gain strength from her hymn in all its complexity. We can still believe that the one whom cherubim worship night and day chooses to be with us in the bleakness of life. And the ending still offers inspiration and challenge. Take those last two lines now and spend a bit of time praying through them. Yet what I can, I give him. Give my heart. Amen.